part two of my talk um, was about providing examples for what I just what I was just presenting. And here are some of the examples. Uh, Music. Everyone knows right now it's hard for music companies, recording studios, to make money. And they're trying like crazy to control their product because as a digital product, it's easily shared. And uh, what we've seen for those looking at playing for change music is it doesn't take a big studio. And it doesn't take a uh, large recording equipment. It doesn't take... Big technology, it doesn't take bringing people together. Time and space don't matter anymore. Uh, technology has made it so that it's easy to make great music without the institution and that professional class of employees that used to be necessary. In travel, when you wanted to travel someplace not too long ago, you would have to go to a person and say, I want to go from here to here, and they would, in the background, use their processes and controls and systems to get you travel tickets. Um, nowadays, that's been replaced by us. These used to be like truly a professional class. They had certifications in learning how to, uh, how to make airline tickets. Some of you probably don't even know the Encyclopedia Britannica, but there was a time and a place mm -hmm. when if you wanted to get uh, encyclopedia-like information, you bought a series of books or you went to the library and flipped through these large sets of books to, uh, to get encyclopedia information. Nowadays, you just go online. An interesting side note to that is there used to be a group of people who would collect information, type it up, editors, uh, copywriters, people that wrote material and published it and with printers for the printing of the books. And nowadays, it's done by volunteers in an online situation. If you want to write a book, you used to have to go to a publisher, find an editor, and get that book produced. And then their distribution system would get it out to the masses. Now you can go to lulu.com and you can get that book published and get it distributed on your own. Photography. Uh, there was a time and a place when you would have to go you would grab your family together and you would go to a studio. They would take photographs of you. I'm sure they had professional certifications and different levels of professional certifications. And nowadays, you go online and you find a great photographer who comes to you who can uh, share with you the results of the sitting digitally on the spot. Um, you used to have to come back, right? You used to have to give them time to to develop the film, and then you would come back with your family, and you'd go through the pictures, and you'd select which ones, and they would make out the sizes. Nowadays, they, they give you the negatives, which are essentially digital files, and you can print them to your heart's content. This is an interesting one. So, uh, the Washington Post, newspapers, as we typically know them, and WikiLeaks. And what's interesting about this is WikiLeaks, uh, certainly the, the founder, got in trouble recently for letting out information that not too long ago, if the Washington Post had let it out, there would be no trouble. And in fact, the Washington Post is an organization responsible for the Pentagon Papers, right around the Vietnam War, and there was nothing we could do. Whereas the WikiLeaks guy, he's in big trouble. Operating systems. Um, Steve Ballmer said, Linux will never amount to something because the average contributor only contributes one thing to Linux. And that may be true that the average contributes just over one. But that's because they've got the full curve. They've got some people contributing a thousand things, and some people contributing ten things, and there's a whole lot of people contributing one thing each. So the mode, right, the middle of that is one. What Microsoft has is they've hired the top X amount of people who are all big contributors. They have the tall neck portion of the graph. They don't have the long neck. So what examples do you have? What examples can you think of as you think about this for disruptive businesses that have come into traditional institutions and put them out of business?